So, I went to Nam. Well, I didn't. I went to Birmingham, which is the Birmingham Guitar Show, which isn't in Birmingham, it's in Solihull. I think it's just called the Guitar Show now. But anyway, we're going to call it Birmingham because I find that funny. Anyway, this is like a vlog or something. There's a bit of a walkthrough. We get to check out some of the vendors and meet some familiar faces, etc. It's a bit of a long one, so please do use the chapters if you need to. Or you can just put it on in the background while you're doing something more interesting. Right, so let's try this vlog stuff. Birmingham Guitar Show. First, we've got to get there. So the first train was Dundee to Edinburgh Waverley. And then from Edinburgh Waverley, we had to get a train to Wolverhampton, which was not the plan, but that's what we did. And then from Wolverhampton, we got ourselves to Birmingham New Street. And here's a big bull to prove it. See? And then from Birmingham New Street, we had a wee walk to Birmingham Moor Street. And then from Birmingham Moor Street, we had to get a train to Solihull. And then from Solihull, it was another 20 minute walk to our accommodation. Which is this lovely wee 11 star guitar resort right here. <laughs> the next day. Okay, now we're in the queue for the guitar show. Exciting, getting nervous and scratching my beard. Outside hat on. Welcome to the guitar show, let's go. This is how you pay to get in, and then they stamp you, and then you go. But first, we need a wee coffee, do we? Oh, that do we. Smashing. Hello, we're at the guitar show in the dining room. Just checking if these mics are working. One, two, one, two, one, two. Did that work? I'm on guitar show. Let's attempt to take you on a tour. I'm going to turn the camera around. Here we go. Apologies for this quick interjection. Just before we get proper started, I just need to explain that this was filmed over two days. And on the second day, I had some help filming from Yoshi. Thank you, Yoshi. So don't be alarmed if you see some jumps to different attire throughout. That's what's happened. Right, let's do it. So this is at the start, let's get a wee walk. And over on the side here, we've got the Crimson Guitars Workshop. Pretty cool stuff going on there, so there was. And then I think that's the guitar giveaway. And I don't know who she's texting, but don't worry about that. Oh, there's the Yam Pax, Yamaha Pacificas. They were pretty snazzy. More on that later. <laughs> this is pretty much all the Yamaha family right here. Mm-hmm. Line 6, of course, part of the Yamaha family. What have we got here? Catalyst amps, pair of. And this looks like a Helix, full Helix. A headphones, HX Stomp, THR, HX1, headphones, THR. A guy, yep. And we've got another Catalyst here, played by a young man. Who do you think that is? Probably Chris Buck, I'm not sure. Oh, and here we go, Jet Guitars. This is basically one of the sole reasons for the trip. And this guy here playing the guitar, I'm sorry mate, I can't remember your name if you're watching, but I was speaking to you by the water cooler, he was a cool guy. How did you like the Jet? Did you like it? You could read that. This is Absolute Music, they had a load of gear for sale, used gear, new gear. Quite a lot of cool stuff. I think. People with phones. Backpack. I'm just naming stuff. That looks like the Chapman, that is the Chapman right there. There's the Chapman booth. There's a stool for sitting on, and some guitars. This is all their older models that they were uh, selling off on sale. And then next to that we have the newer models. This gentleman here was jazzing up, getting filmed by the Chapman himself, more than likely for some socials. And that might be a Digital John, I think. See that beard there, by the way? Lots of beards. There's another one. There's another one. There's another two. 
Lots of beards. Should we start counting beards? Nah. Sontronics. That's a nice jacket. Tobacco. Cool. Cool. It's a cool booth. They never heard that joke before the whole time they were there a bit. And if you like pedals, here's some stuff to stand on. Yep, stand away on that. Oh, and this is the, uh, what is this again? Oh yeah, the Booty Q. Booty Q Guitar Collective. And these appear to be the LT Customs guitars here. Pretty snazzy looking if you ask me. I like that blue, that's a nice colour of blue. It's the wrong way around though. <laughs> Very nice. So I think there's a, a few builders in this booth. I'm really sorry I didn't catch who everybody was. Someone commented the other day who was on this booth. I uh, was at Franklin Guitars, I wonder if that's this person. But these were very unique as well. Interesting shapes and designs. Is this the Maybury? I like that amber telly type thing there. Nice, that's a Duesenberg on that. Cool. I think that's Ainsley Lister there with Rift. Is that Ainsley Lister? He was on that pedal show before. Signature amps, I believe. And are these the Maybach, is it? Maybury, apologies. Nine out of ten from Guitarist. Hooft. They must be good because they never give anything like less than. Seven. <coughs> Sorry. Some nice, beautiful bits of wood there, though, I'll tell you. Very cool. What have we got up next here? It's another small builder, I think. SL Guitars. Cool. Oh, yeah, here's the ESP Guitars. Not usually my kind of thing, but pretty cool display. I like the barrel and stuff they've got on there. And I really wanted to get a look at this one in the corner here, that one, but I didn't want to get in that guy's way. But very cool. Had a cool paint job on it. Nice. Right, here we are now speaking to the Yamaha people. This guy was really cool. I can't remember his name, but he's very sound. I was talking about the differences between the shades of roasted maple. Sorry, the shades of maple, not roasted maple. The Pro series and the standard series. A slightly darker shade or a tint on the Japanese ones, the Pro series. But I opted to try out the standard because I like the colour of the late placid blue type of thing. Thought that was cool. Now, if you play a certain series of chords here, there's a chance that you can summon three men to walk around you in a circle. There you go. If you get them just right, and it doesn't matter where you do it, it's only on the Yamaha Pacificas that this happens. But there you go. That was the three chords. That was the three guys. So now we know. Just playing it unplugged at this point, checking out the heel carve there. I like that. Very nice. Slick. Mm-hmm. Yep, this guitar has two sides, back and front. You could see that there. Trying out the trem action. And just discovered the push pull there. Push, pull, no, pull, push. I can't do that, you know what I mean. And the bar is push. Lock and tuners. Mm hmm. Thank you very much to Yoshi on the camera there. Great stuff. I really like the inlays as well. 
they're cool. And of course that thrust rod access at the heel. So at this point I decided to plug it in, but as you can see, they've got a schedule of when you can make noise and when you can't. And it just so happened this is when you can't make noise, which suited me perfectly. So I decided to use the headphones so that no one would hear my playing. And I didn't want to summon any more guys to come over because people are busy doing stuff, you know? You can't just summon people all the time. Anywho, headphones. And the, the gentleman here was offering me wireless, but I was like, nah, I don't like wireless. I prefer wired because I've used wireless before and it doesn't sound as good. Although I've not tried the Yamaha one. Maybe this does sound good. Who knows? But yeah, that was the Yamaha booth, the Pacifica. Finally got to try one. And by the way, the pickup sounded really awesome, particularly position four. I liked that a lot. Uh, was it the Rupert Neve design pickups, I believe? Um, I didn't get the best reference point using headphones and that amp I wasn't too familiar with. It took me a while to dial in, but yeah, I remember that position four was like the standout. And I had a little debate with the Yamaha guys about which one position four was. So you can fight about it in the comments if you want, but I'm calling position four the one next to the neck. Yeah, yeah, four, see, not two, four. What do you say? What do you call it? Do you call it position two or position four? The one next to the neck. Fight, 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 fight. There you go. And of course I've decided not to play those chords again. That was basically the Yamaha Pacifica experience for me. It was very enjoyable. I look kind of happy with that there. Must have been digging it. What's the radius again? It's a flatter radius than I like. But there you go. Making waves there, apparently. Well, that's the instruction, is to make waves. I don't know if I did that. And this is another offer for the wireless thing. I'm like, nah. But enough of your wireless. Wired all the way. That's all right, it's all good. Just testing this mic. Hello. And here's the lamb, eh? Look. How'd you do? Here's the lamb. <laughs> this might make it to a video, who knows? So we bumped into Lamy, and we're going to have a wee interview, so keep an eye out for that coming up on the channel soon. Like and subscribe, if you want. This is the Cord Guitars. We had quite a few things out. And also they had the Manson guitars, which were very cool. I really liked the colour of these two in particular. On their own, they weren't that exciting, but when you see the two of them together, I like this colour combination. It's, like, it's exactly the kind of colour pink that I'm trying to make the refinish Fazley one that I'm doing. It's like a magenta, almost. Or what do you think it is? Who knows? Whoa! Don't mind if I do. <laughs> and here's a KDH found in his natural habitat playing a guitar. I did get a chance to speak to him at the very end. I actually nipped the background and stopped him and says, KDH, you're my favorite. Because he is. It's my favourite guitar channel. Right on Guitar Straps. I absolutely love this company. Uh, I think they're Spanish. They're Spanish. Uh, all handmade stuff. All uh, in line with my ethical values. Animal free. Love it. Can't complain. Vegan Guitar Straps. 100% free of all animal parts. That's right up my street, so that is. I've got three of them, but I don't use them too much. And here's the man chap giving it big licks in the shredding. 
I had an interview with him last week, you could see that on the channel, check it out. And here again are these Chapman guitars that are on sale. I think they sold quite a lot of these on the day. In fact, Rich, the novice noisemaker, he bought one, didn't you Rich? Ah, uh, you did. And here's the new ones, I think that's the Lawmaker right there, which used to be the ML2, ML4, I'm not good at the names. And even got a chance to speak to the Chappers. I couldn't believe it, I just chanced it on the way out, and he was very gracious and kind with his time. And that's Mr Chapman there showing me the Guardian, their new model that they've brought out. Thank you mate if you're watching. You're not, but thanks anyway. Did we just become best friends? Yup! That's the noise that says thank you so much, Mr. Chapman, for giving us a bit of time. Thank you. And uh, thank you for telling all these people to subscribe to Steve Crossley Guitar. Make What's sure you subscribe here? to Steve. Why? Why should they subscribe, Rob? Why is my channel the best ever? Don't tell him. He's a sexy wee man. <laughs> Why? Thank you so much, mate. Hugely appreciate it. <laughs>
And here we've got the Vox booth, Vox guitars, Vox amps. This wee teardrop thing was interesting. But the one that I really liked is over in the corner here. I've seen one of these before. This is the, is it the Bobcat? We'll find it in a minute. We're going to see it. Yes. Bobcat Bigsby. Very unique guitar there. Right up my street. Three single coils on a semi-hollow. I'd be so keen to try that out, see what it's all about. In fact, that's just gave me an idea. What about HSS on a semi-hollow? Hmm. Very cool though. I like it. Neural DSP. These guys were giving it the hard sell, I'll tell you that. Uh, I like the form factor of this unit. It's pretty cool. Might look into that in the future. GHS guitars, well, these are all vintage guitars, the vintage brand. They've got some really cool models there, as you can see. Really like the look of that orange thin line Jazzmaster type thing with Tron pickups in it and block inlays. I like that. And this one was also interesting, this pickup configuration. Looks like there's a lot of cool switching going on there. Thin line as well, how could you not love that? Fletcher pickups in the corner there, and this is the Loxley guitars, who've got this cool sort of Brian May type design, I'm allowed to call it that. I really like that. Here's James Home of Tone. And you wouldn't know by looking at this, but this is actually filmed backwards. Pedals. Not really my kind of thing, the pedals, but you know, had some cool artwork on them. So yeah, there we go. But speaking of pedals, I know a guy who isn't a pedals. This guy right here. This is the budget pedal chap, AKA BPC, AKA Budge. And we got a wee chat as well. So another interview coming up on the channel soon for that. And by all means do check out Budget Pedal Chap's channel. Loads of cool pedal reviews and such. As you can see, this is Schecter, and this is Nick Johnson, and this is the Nick Johnson Schecter. Someone suggested before I should check one of these out. I think it might have been Rubbish Guitar Bloke, was it? Was that you, mate? Um, so yeah, getting a wee feel for it there before plugging it in, just wanted to feel the neck. 14 inch radius, and I'll tell you what, this thing was like super slick and comfortable in the hand. Really like the neck feel, satin back finish, super smooth. The 14 inch radius is flatter than I usually like, but I actually felt really good. But as I mentioned before, you've got to give these things time. It might feel good to start with, but it's not until after a couple of hours that you'll see if the hand fatigue sets in and if it's for you or not. This was another cool model, can't remember the name, I'll put it up on screen. But it's kind of a little bit like what uh, the Square Contemporary series were doing with their pickup switching. So they've got the two single coils right up against each other. And I was asking the guy about the switching, but it's the same as you'd expect. PMT stall and Antiquity guitars. These are the sort of almost house brand or exclusives. Um, yeah, some good prices there, some cool models. That Mustang looks particularly cool. I've just got a thing for Lake Placid Blue though, that must be what it is. Yeah, what do you think of that? PMT also had a good range of uh, pre-owned items in as well. Here's just a wee selection of them, but there was about another two tables of them. Lots of cool stuff. Luckily, I didn't bring much money. Right, so this is what I call the quiet coach. It's not really quiet, but it was mainly acoustics in here, and it was much quieter of a room. Emerald Guitars was right around the back here, but yeah, just having a wee walk about and a look. Here's the Granger Guitars, and they got the LED working on this one here. That's pretty cool. It's like epoxy resin and wood, and yeah, the LEDs. Very cool, striking guitar. Now, the only thing that I bought at the guitar show Birmingham, hashtag Birmingham 2024, was these Ernie Ball strap blocks, question mark. 4 they were, more than I'd usually pay for that kind of thing, but 
I had to have them. They were neon pink. And here's the live stage. You can pause this if you want to see who was on. I missed all of these guys. I got too excited. Next time I'll definitely check them out. And here we go, the science of Lound. Scotland! Uh, bumped into Colin here, Colin Scott. And uh, we've got a wee chat. Alongside Rob Chapman, he also recommended get on the Instagram. So, we're there. I think we're pals on Instagram. The Scots, Scots are taking over. Well, he's already took over years ago. I'm late to the party. But he was a very cool guy and it was great to meet him. Speaking of cool guys, wow. Ben Crow, this guy was just such an awesome gent. Gave me some great advice on removing poly finishes in future. Use a blowtorch. Who would have thought? That was pretty cool actually, the wee lesson that he gave us. And here he is, Rich the Novice Noisemaker. So cool to meet him in the flesh. A great guy, so he is. So after that, it was time to head home. Went to get a wee munch. And this was such a cool restaurant, this reggae themed place. And I had to treat Yoshi for being a great camera person for the whole Sunday. And being so patient with me with all this guitar stuff. So there you go Yoshi, she got fed. And that's a wall of amps which I thought looked pretty cool. I think I'm going to use that as a backdrop for a thumbnail or something in future. Right, let's head back home. The next station is Birmingham Moor Street. This train... From Solihull to Birmingham Moor Street, from Birmingham Moor Street back to, oh, what the hell is that? Oh, that's the bill. Back to New Street, and I can't remember if I took any more videos, but that was pretty much the end of the trip. Time to head home to Scotland. Thanks for the guitar show. See you next year. Don't know if you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments. So that was it. Here's my summary, some final thoughts on the Birmingham Guitar Show 2024. What did we think? What did we learn? Well, it was great. I had a brilliant time. I loved getting to see all this guitar stuff all under one roof and getting to meet up with people that I've been watching on this here YouTube for ages. Getting to meet them in person, very cool. So I'll definitely be going back next year. But for this first time, I think I got a wee bit too excited. I didn't know what to expect or what to do really and I always had at the back of my mind that I should be making some kind of videos or something for the channel. So I was constantly distracted. and I didn't get to see everything that I wanted to see even although I was there for like two days, I didn't see any of the live shows, so I'll definitely want to see that the next time. I'm gutted that I missed that pedal show live. Eh. Next time, I'm definitely going to do more pre-planning. I'm going to check out all the vendors beforehand, maybe contact some of them before, see if I can get a slot booked to speak to them or something like that. I don't know. But I'm going to try and be more organised next time. And now I've got a better idea of how to film things. I've got this wee mic thing and... There's some improvements I can maybe make for next time. So, did you go to the show? Have you been to the Birmingham Guitar Show before? Have you been to any guitar shows? Is there another show that you would recommend I should check out? Let me know in the comments. Also, you might have noticed this is a bit of a departure from the usual kind of content here on this channel, so maybe give me some feedback on that if you can as well. More like this? Yes, no, maybe? Let me know. As you've just seen there, we've got some interviews coming up, so keep an eye out for them. Also, live streams every Thursday at 7.30pm, and these are always going to be centred around a topic that will be from a community poll post earlier in the week. So, if you want to be more involved in that, you're probably going to want to hit subscribe, and you might want to turn the notifications on so you can see the post. The regular video uploads will be most Fridays at 6pm UK time. And I've quite recently started posting some behind the scenes stuff on the old Instagram. So, link in the description if you want to check any of that out. I don't know if it's worth checking out, but it's there. Alright? Okay. If you got this far, thanks for watching. Until next time. See you later!